Welcome to America's Defense Communities, the podcast I'm Randy Ford. And I'm Isabel Zimmerman. One of my favorite projects to work on at the Association of Defense Communities is the Defense Community Champions Program. To find 2023's Defense Community Champions, we went into communities across the country to find people who are truly making a difference in their communities. 17 champions were identified across the country because of the work they do to bridge the gap between their community and their local installation. Three of those local champions were selected to be recognized as national honorees. They were Dr. Lucy Green from South Georgia, Rick Mueller from Sierra Vista, Arizona, and Kimberly Huth from St. Clair County, Illinois. And I got to go to Scott Air Force Base to talk to one of those champions, Kimberly Huth. She's the Director of Military Affairs for St. Clair County, Illinois. Uh, and the first thing I asked her about was about St. Clair County and what it's like there. And here's part of our conversation. It covers a piece of Southern Illinois with about 279,000 citizens. Uh, there's all walks of life. It's diverse. It's close to St. Louis, but it's on the Illinois side. Uh, so there's lots of things to do, but it's a community that is incredible. It's been here a long time. Scott Air Force Base has been here over 100 years. And when you think of the heart of our nation, it's right here at Scott Air Force Base and St. Clair County. And, and really, where Scott ends and St. Clair County starts, there's a blurred line. We call ourselves hashtag Team St. Clair or hashtag Team Scott, and it's just wonderful. How proud are people in St. Clair County of Scott and the mission here? They're so proud they're too humble almost sometimes. The people of St. Clair County, they just want to help. They just want to continue to uplift the people who serve our nation. And, and a lot of those folks are right here at Scott Air Force Base. So there's businesses, there's churches, there's nonprofits, there's community support, there's churches that just lift our community up. And, and within our community are the airmen, soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines that serve our nation right here at Scott Air Force Base. And they're, they're um, within the fiber of our community. What is it you do? You know, I'm, I call myself the translator, so I'm retired from the Air Force. I served 24 years in the Air Force, and now I'm part of the community. So as the, as the community and the base continue to work together for the greater good, the greater need of our nation, I'm the person that says, okay, what is that need, or what, what is it that the community can offer, or what is it that the base can offer to the community as we look at economic development, as we look at legislative, um, legislative opportunities. I'm the person, the liaison between the Scott Air Force Base and the, the county of St. Clair County, and I advise the chairman of our St. Clair County Board on, on those items. Why did you take this job? Well, first of all, it was an honor to be asked by Chairman Mark Kern. He's our St. Clair County Board Chairman, if I was interested. And um, I, am, I am just sappy enough to tell you that I lost a great comrade in combat the 1st of November 2007, and his name is Thomas Kroll. Um, he's honored here at Scott Air Force Base on, on uh, one of our buildings, but he was my good friend. And I think after I retired, I needed a place to put my voice and my actions to say that we'll never forget the families, we'll never forget the community, we'll never forget the people who serve, whether they're, you know, we're no longer at war. And some of the folks that are coming up, some of the young folks that are coming up, they have to be reminded that the sacrifice that happens within our community, it happened right here. My friend served from right, he left his boys from right here at Scott Air Force Base and uh, went and was killed in combat. So I serve and I accepted the position just to make sure that we continue to have these conversations and talk about the families that are supporting and lifting up those who serve. They're right here at Scott Air Force Base and some of them are my friends. So I no longer serve and wear a uniform, but I think that uh, it was an opportunity to serve in a different way and lift up um, the families and, and continue to share their stories. I do that through, through whatever means I can. How often do you think about him? I think of Thomas Kroll every day, every day. Um, you know, it's a, it's a great story. So we were at a, uh, we were running an exercise one time and I was his boss and he was a master sergeant, but he was a special agent in the Air Force. And he, uh, he brought his boys into work because he was just the command post. And a lot of people had opinions about whether he should or shouldn't do that. And you know, four months later, four months later, he was deployed and lost his, lost his life. And I think, what a gift that he had that time with his boys. And it really, it really kind of set me on a path to say, I'm going to honor that kind of commitment to family, taking care of the families, you know. And now we have to, 
as a community take care of those boys and there's scholarships and they're doing great, they're, they're grown now, but um, if it sounds sappy, it is sappy, but why not be sappy? Why not remember? It has to be somehow translated to the community in a way that they understand it. And I think that's my number one gift that I give this community is, it may seem confusing what happens here at Scott Air Force Base, but I'm gonna tell you and I'm gonna teach you and, and they wanna teach you and they want you, they wanna tell you so. I'll be the translator, I'll be the liaison that does that. And that makes a difference when, when a civilian runs into someone in uniform at Jack in the Box. Uh, thanks to you, they have an idea of what happens here and what that person might be thinking. You know, if it's bullets, if it's baby formula, if it's 124,000 evacuees from Afghanistan, I want, I want you to know those missions start right here at Scott Air Force Base. They're planned, they're executed. If there's a, a need for a medical evacuation, you know, if someone gets hurt, that can happen right here at Scott Air Force Base. When uh, Nancy Pelosi went into um, Taiwan, that mission was done out of here with our reservists. I mean, there's nothing that happens in the Department of Defense that doesn't involve logistics. And those logistics are planned right here at Scott Air Force Base. And, and I'm on their team. They treat me as a teammate. And I think it's cute sometimes because we all think our base is the best and we all think our community is the best. But we really are the best. We really are the best because nothing happens without logistics. And I understand that and I, you know, I, didn't, uh, I didn't grow up in the Air Force as a logistician. I was just a gun toter. But I'll tell you, nothing happens. All of the folks in all of the defense communities, they're all successful but I would argue that we make them successful. We bring them the items that make them successful. And so we're silent warriors. We're silent, we're supporting, and our community is plugging in and, and supporting with, you know, we, we passed a law last year for license portability for our spouses as they move. We wanna remove barriers. We wanna make it easy when you come to Scott Air Force Base. If you're a family member, that you're gonna fit right in. We're gonna help you as you get into our schools. You're not gonna have to worry about do these credits transfer we look at those things before you get here. Because sometimes the military members that transfer in the commanders, they've got two years with us, and by the time they're getting to know us and breaking bread and having coffee, it's time for them to leave. So uh, we're kind of removing the barriers. At, at the Association of Defense Communities, we're working on a one community effort. I think that makes sense because in St. Clair County and Scott Air Force Base, what we're trying to do is, as you look at a community, there are so many nonprofits. There are so many councils, there's so many opportunities to meet and gather and partner to make the community better. We want to remove who's who in the zoo and we want to let you know that we're all here for you and you don't have to have 20 contacts, you can have just one. If you have a need and you tell one of us, we're all going to work on it. That was my colleague Randy talking to Kimberly Booth, Director of Military Affairs for St. Clair County, Illinois. He also talked with Colonel Christopher Robinson, Commander of the 375th Air Mobility Wing. They discussed how Scott Air Force Base collaborates with the county and its towns. Our community partners are top tier as far as I'm concerned. Uh, our dorms here for our airmen, where our airmen come in, the place they live is named after the local towns around here. So we have the Belleville dorm, the Mascuta dorm, and the Shiloh dorm. And those communities actually sponsor our airmen when they come in. Every airman that comes in gets a, a, a laundry basket as a welcome basket that's just full of stuff that a, that, a, that a young person would need to start a life. You know, everything from Tide Pods to roll of, uh, of, of paper towels, you know, the bed sheets are in there. And, and it just makes our airmen feel at home from the time they get here. Our airmen that don't have cars, the local community provides a shuttle service that rides around our base and takes care of those airmen. Um, you name it, uh, everything from uh, major engagements with congressional delegations or the state of Illinois through our Military Economic Development Committee, our local uh, leaders help advocate for our airmen and our mission here at Scott Air Force Base. Everything that we've ever asked for uh, from the local community, they've given and given more. We feel like we're part of the community here. We actually have a, a weird uh, retention problem here at Scott. And, and this is a, it's a really good problem to have as an installation commander, but we have people that don't want to leave, right? And so when it's time to PCS, we have people that we, we, we have to shove them out the door to get them to leave. It's a great place to live and raise a family, but that's, that's all in the local community. I was looking at all of your duty stations and you keep finding your way back here. Yep, yep. Why is that? Well, uh, 
first of all, you know, it's a it's a headquarters base, right? So we have a lot of a lot of opportunities for uh, folks to progress. So I've had several assignments here at Air Mobility Headquarters, uh, and then again at U.S. Transportation Command, and then a third assignment here as the uh, installation commander. Um, but quite frankly, uh, when we had the opportunity to come to Scott, it was the first thing on our list. Uh, my family, as you can probably tell from my accent, is not from here originally. We're from down south, but this is where they consider home. My, my, my son is going to school over in Missouri. My daughter plans to follow him over in Missouri uh, for, for school as well. Uh, we just love this area and uh, the people here are, are welcoming and they're genuine. Would you like to nominate a defense community champion? Our 2023 to 2024 program is opening this May. Visit defensecommunities.org slash champions to learn more. Hi there, I'm Chris Studios. Here are some of the stories that have been going on in our communities. Truax Field in Wisconsin has become the first Air Force base in the world to stop using foam-based fire suppressants. The base's civil engineer, Lieutenant Colonel Mike Dunlap, said they knew that's what the community wanted. The Air Force has set an October 2024 deadline for all bases to move away from firefighting foam that includes PFAS. The Air Force named three bases to get new air fleets. Naval Air Station Joint Reserve New Orleans and Fresno Air National Guard Base will get new F-15EX Strike Eagles. Barnes Air National Guard Base in Massachusetts will get new F-35A Lightning II aircraft. There will be environmental studies before the decisions are final in spring 2024. Army Garrison Hawaii broke ground on two new child development centers that should help with a long waiting list in the state. The facilities will accommodate more than 650 kids when they're finished, but that won't be until 2026. And the Navy has selected five potential designs for the new National Museum of the U.S. Navy. You can go see the Navy Museum designs online. The museum will be just outside Washington, D.C.'s Navy Yard when it opens in 2025. For more news, check out our stories at defensecommunities.org. You can also sign up there for our daily newsletter, On Base. America's Defense Communities, the podcast, is a production of the Association of Defense Communities online at defensecommunities.org. Be sure to subscribe and review the show wherever you listen to podcasts.